Okay, we're back at Oracle Open World. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE.com. We're inside the Cube, where we are live in San Francisco, California for Oracle Open World 2011. Um, we are inside the Cube, our flagship telecast, where we go out to the top most important tech events and bring all the tech action, commentary, insight, opinions, entertainment to you and share that knowledge with the world, extracting the signal from the noise, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and John, there certainly has been a lot of entertainment today, hasn't there? Been entertaining, all, so the morning breaking news was Mark Benioff's keynote was canceled, and he had a guerrilla marketing keynote, called an, I'm calling an un-keynote at the St. Regis. We were there covering it live, we got right in the front row, we live streamed it in tandem to their stream, picture in picture. I got a one-on-one -on -one interview with Mark Benioff, and uh, Mark Benioff, certainly no stranger to swagger, and he was swinging the swagger big time this morning. Huge, huge uh, turnout at the St. Regis. I mean, there was a revolution coming out for uh, Mark Benioff, who's a pioneer in the social area with uh, SaaS, with Salesforce.com, and obviously the apprentice to Larry over the years, now on his own. Really, really sticking it to Larry in, in, in his comments, Dave. So, let's listen to Mark Benioff at his un-keynote where he was booted from Oracle Open World and he went out on his own to the streets. Back to We're going to come go. right back to Larry Angle. Angle. All right. So, uh, great to have you. Nice to be here. Tell us about uh, your, uh, the keynote and why you're excited. You're going you're gonna to be not around tomorrow, so you're not doing the, the closet keynote tomorrow, are you? I'm on my way to do a keynote right now, actually, in Ohio, so I had to, you know, recreate my keynote here at the V restaurant at the St. Regis Hotel because Larry canceled my keynote. Um, but we were able to quickly respond and uh, change and we just uh, did a great job. So your Facebook message is obviously home run. Facebook is huge, open source. They're creating real value for their customers with open source, big data, Hadoop, commodity servers. But they are a big Oracle customer. So like they print the paychecks probably on Oracle, right? They probably do some... They some, use Oracle's general ledger. Yeah, yes. some basic stuff. It's like That's running right. water. It's like Plumbing, that's right. right? That's Is right. it really adding value to their business? Well, it's not delivering the 100 billion transactions that they're uh, doing for their customers. And the point is that they're not using Exadata mainframes to run Facebook. So the they're, question is, They're using the cloud. So the question I have for you is, do you think Facebook would be successful if they were running Oracle systems as their core technology? I don't know how you build Facebook on Exadata. Maybe Larry knows. <laughs> Mark Benioff, Maverick, congratulations. You got some big, you. big home news. Thank you very much for Thanks inviting us. Much. Thank you for being here. Okay. You heard Mark. Benny off there interview. Okay, so I got Mark on there. So um, great comment from Mark Benny off. He's here doing the uh, rounds here, and uh, let's see if I can get the little background shot here. So he's continuing to uh, talk to the crowd here. I see. Facebook, in my opinion, would not be a real big business if Benioff uh, uh, didn't highlight that point uh, in terms of like the overall Facebook value proposition. And what he was highlighting is that General Ledger is just a you know, perfunctory function for Facebook and that in no way would Facebook be a huge business if they used Exadata. So I think that's it, guys. I'll be right back. I'm going to walk over now to, uh, to uh, your place. I'll do some live footage before I walk out. All right, folks, that's John Furrier. He's live uh, at the conference. You saw John had Mark Benioff Mark Benioff on. doing his thing. Get little photos with the fans. He's the bad boy of tech. Mark Benioff, the bad boy of tech. Live commentary from at Furrier. Broadcast live on SiliconAngle.tv. Covering all the angles. Okay. Right, now, guys, uh, Furrier asked uh, Benioff a question. Uh, do you think Facebook runs Exadata? That uh, was obviously tongue in cheek. And uh, Benioff's response was, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think they'd know how to do that. Maybe Larry knows how to do that. What social but, uh, means, obviously, to me, Facebook has had some great success. But, you know, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, all called time wasters. A question for uh, Salesforce. Can they bridge that social divide? And me, the social divide is about really being a time waster on social versus real productivity. I don't think social is there yet. I think the trust and noise problem on social is a big, big issue. And so we're going to get back down there. We will address all this in depth on the cube on SiliconAngle.tv, SiliconAngle.com, and we'll find all the coverage. All right, guys, see you later. All right, John Furrier's out. That was John Furrier live from the press conference over at the St. Regis AME restaurant uh, in San Francisco. Um, as you no doubt know by now, 
uh, Oracle canceled the Mark Benioff keynote this morning. Uh, they had to scramble, Salesforce had to scramble, move across the street. Mark Benioff would have, thought, was, would have spoken to tens of thousands of people this morning, uh, but they moved across the street, spoke to about 100 people. There was a line outside the, the restaurant. He could not, they could not get in. Um, but the publicity that Salesforce Mark Risen Hopkins got out of this is huge. Yes. Uh, we've been covering this live. Many others have, I'm sure, as well. Uh, just you can't buy this kind of press, can you? No, absolutely not. And you know, the thing that, that if substantively from uh, his, his uh, keynote there that struck out to me or that stuck out for me was the uh, the Facebook you know, in, incorporating the discussion of the open graph which I think would be new since his Dreamforce uh, keynote right because that open graph was just announced a couple weeks ago uh, I think it's interesting that he's presenting uh, Salesforce is almost like a totally social company now. It's almost in that Web 2.0 camp, almost completely divorced from enterprise, other than the you know enterprise benefits of being such a social uh, organization, a socially centric organization. Uh, so, you know, obviously, message and positioning hasn't changed much for Salesforce, but what has changed is the crowd he's pitching it to. I, I can't recall a time when he's come into an Oracle open world in the past, and had executives from Facebook come on and talk with them. Well, as we've seen, social media is changing every part of, of society, politics, business, the economy. Uh, you're seeing uh, the Arab Spring, you know, catalyzed uh, in many regards by social media. And I think it's a recognition that the traditional sales model, Salesforce.com, started with CRM, uh, what used to be known as Salesforce automation. Those terms are dead terms, they're old terms. Uh, uh, Benioff has always been an innovator, uh, started the company in the height of the dot-com dot boom, um, and is now transforming and sees the, the social wave. He basically laid out that the next wave, he's called the next wave beyond mobile, beyond what Steve Jobs created as social with what Mark Zuckerberg has is, is created, and he wants to be a part of that. Basically, if you think, Mark, about how sales is done, it's belly to belly, it's on the phone, it's through the reseller channels, Salesforce has automated a lot of that, and, and essentially, we're seeing the dawn of the age of social sales. Yeah. Um, and, and Salesforce is going to be part of that. O of course, you're right. He's talking about much more than Salesforce automation. He's talking about uh, automating social connections. Right, yeah, it's, and, it, and that has, as we know from you know, watching the whole Web 2.0 social revolution, it's got hooks in PR, it's got hooks in marketing, it's got hooks into sales, I mean, it, community management, I mean, just creating a social organization from the ground up out of your, out of your company, out of your business as you know, in, innumerable benefits. Mark, we've been talking uh, all this week about cloud, big data, obviously we cover social a lot. We haven't been talking a lot about social until today. Um, you mentioned uh, Facebook's open graph, a uh, new announcement a couple weeks ago. Talk about what that is and how that relates to the cloud uh, and big data specifically. Well, I mean, it's uh, open graph is actually uh, a year old. What they did is they've expanded it uh, a little bit in connection with a bunch of other announcements that Facebook announced in uh, Zuck's keynote, uh, Mark Zuckerberg's keynote this year. And uh, it's, it's opening up the presentation and changing the way applications in will interface with Facebook users. So uh, I'm sure we've all had like sheep thrown at us or been super poked and all these other kind of like weird, almost annoying uh, notifications that we get. It's like a denial of service attack with pokes. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like, oh, all right. Oh, uh, yeah. So yeah. What, we're, what they're doing is they're, they're taking a lot of these uh, application notifications and they're, they're deprecating the importance of it. It's not going into your main feed like it used to. We've got almost like a secondary feed uh, if you notice, if you log into Facebook now, you've got this little constantly updating thing of all, all what all your friends are doing in all parts of your life. Oh, someone just listened to a song on Spotify. You know, they just moved a chess piece or put down a word in Scrabble or whatever it is that they're doing. These little mundane updates, it's still being chronicled and pushed to the users, but in a deprecated way that doesn't completely you know, obstruct uh, social interaction and communication uh, through the wall and the activity stream feeds. But it's essentially making a lot more data available. Um, yes. And, and, and that's how, I guess, it ties into the big data theme that we've been talking about here. Um, some really clever marketing that we saw at the event. NetApp had Billy Bean yesterday. Yes. Uh, uh, John Furrier, in his inimitable style, covered that as well. Had, had Billy Bean on a social cam. Had Tom Georgians. Outstanding marketing. You know, here's... Here's a, a conference, everybody's talking about uh, big data and Hadoop, cloud meets big data, um, 
NetApp brought in Billy Bean. For those of you who don't know, he's the general manager of the Oakland A's. Uh, Billy Bean was a, a star athlete, uh, but never really made it big time in the big leagues. Uh, became a general manager of the A's and really embraced um, analytics. And, right. And the challenge that he had was the Oakland A's have a tiny little payroll. They can't compete with uh, the Boston Red Sox and New York, New York Yankees and other major cities mm -hmm. uh, on a payroll basis. So he have, has only one way to compete, and that's data. So he used data to find value. Um, he developed uh, with his team new statistics um, and used those to identify players that were as productive as the, you know, the $20 million a year types uh, or maybe slightly less productive, but uh, cost maybe a million dollars a year right. and built a competitive franchise and year after year after year, the Oakland A's have competed. Uh, a number of times they made the playoffs. They just missed getting in the World Series a couple of times. And uh, so a phenomenal story there. And, and of course, NetApp brings Billy Bean into Oracle Open World, good marketing, yeah. signing books. Also it was, uh, very subject clever. of the uh, movie Moneyball, right? That's correct. the The book was Moneyball, um, and oh, the and, movie that's and, coming and out. Now I guess. the movie's coming out. Yeah. Uh, Brad Pitt and uh, Michael Lewis wrote the book. Uh, same guy who wrote The Big Short um, and uh, and and uh, Liars Poker. So a uh, fantastic book. If you have not read Moneyball and you like baseball, it's a must read for any baseball fan. Um, okay, we're here live. Uh, SiliconAngle.com and Wikibon's continuous coverage of uh, the Oracle Open World event. Here at Moscone, the big news today uh, was the Salesforce.com conference. Uh, Mark Benioff was basically his keynote today was canceled. He had a scramble, move across the street. We covered it live. Um, some other news going on. Uh, Cisco, John Chambers had a keynote today. What, what else is happening, Mark? Uh, well, I mean, the, like the aftermath of the Apple thing. I, actually, I, before we uh, transition off of Benioff, I wanted to ask you one question. Uh, it, John asked me uh, while we were chatting back and forth and watching the keynote. Uh, how do you think that this is going to impact uh, Larry Ellison? Because we're becoming Larry Ellison's keynote, uh, at least partially, uh, at the close of the show today. How much of it will be devoted to a uh, response to, to Benioff? How much do you think will continue the circus? I think that um, there is no question in my mind anyway, and we'll see. Time, we'll see in a couple hours. Larry Ellison is going to have the last word. Of course. That's why Larry goes on at, at, at Wednesday. Um, and so... I find it hard to believe he, I, I, I can almost promise that in some way, shape, or form, he is going to address the criticisms that were laid on him today. And those criticisms include uh, Oracle is all about the next generation mainframe. Um, in Benioff's mind, it's not the next great thing. Uh, he said Oracle is the false cloud. Um, basically, depositioning Oracle as a company that is proprietary, closed, lock-in, undemocratic, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And Ellison is absolutely going to respond to that. Uh, I don't think he'll mention Benioff by name. Uh, he very well may mention um, Benioff by title as he did last year, but I, I have no doubt that Ellison will, uh, will respond. He's one of the best in public speaking environments. He's smart, he's funny, uh, he's clever, and uh, I would expect that he's going to devote a fair amount of time to repositioning Oracle in the, in the minds of the attendees here and those watching uh, outside the show. So how do you think he'll do it? Will he, will he uh, refocus the messaging about Oracle? You know, will he maybe tie some social or some uh, you know, kind of hipper things into the messaging or will he just kind of reiterate what he said in the opening keynote but in a way that uh, you know, like he did last year that kind of answers uh, Benioff's allegations like being false cloud and whatnot? Ellison is one of these unique speakers who has the ability to um, get his message across, which he's going to do, he's going to exa and mega us to death, mm -hmm. um, but he has this unique ability through humor and sarcasm to make a point um, that puts himself on a pedestal and lowers the other guy. Right. And I think that's what he's going to do. Um, he's incredibly clever. He's always done that. He's done it in the past with the likes of Bill Gates, this whole thin client thing. He's, yeah. He did it last year with Benioff. He had the last word, he had the audience laughing. Um, it's now famous, and, and he had the upper hand at the end of the day. So uh, I think that's how he's gonna do it. John Furrier's in, uh, phenomenal job. I got a hats off, Good John job. Furrier. Uh, it was, uh, no, it was fantastic. The Benioff interview was great. Yes. Um, uh, John Furrier, you know, came in today, gorillaed his way in. A lot, there was a line outside the St. Regis restaurant. Of course, 
coach John Furrier got in, flashed the Silicon Angle logo, and, and he was in. Oh, come on, come on in, John. Um, he was there Skyping. We had it covered. Uh, it was just fantastic. We're going to bring John Furrier in right now and, uh, and get his take uh, on, on that. We were just talking, John, uh, about the, the event within the event. Uh, what was the vibe like over there? Oh. Nice job, by How's the way. That's my lid. Fantastic. I'm sweating like a pig. <laughs> uh, I was in the front row. Uh, so, essentially, you saw the posters, right? So, you know, the Benioff, uh, Benioff, right too, too innovative for Oracle Open World. Essentially, it's the clash of the big egos. Mark Benioff's egos can, is huge. Um, Larry Ellison. So, the, so, you heard from Michael Kringsman, who's a blogger, that uh, the, apparently the notification that Salesforce got was simply an auto-reply responder. One sentence email says, your keynote has been canceled. And then they couldn't even reply back because it was one of those auto-responders you get on email. So that set the whole stage. He went off on Twitter. SiliconAngle.com broke the news. Um, obviously, we had it on Twitter. Um, Benioff then took my tweet, turned it into a live revolution tweet because I said, hey, we're going to come over and stream your meeting. Uh, it ended up becoming what I'm calling an un-keynote, very similar to an unconference. Yeah. So, and it's basically an un-keynote, revolution keynote, what do you want to call it, underground keynote. But the vibe was amazing. They had people outside. It was classic textbook guerrilla marketing. I got an umbrella, they got people outside, looked like a political rally holding up Mark Benioff signs, salesforce.com. So the full marketing machine of Salesforce went into action. Um, essentially after the canceled keynote, they went in and said, uh, we're going to go make this happen. Line around the corner. I went up there and they're like, sorry, you stand in the line. I'm like, well, no, we'd like to just live stream it. And then uh, that was just someone from Hill and Knowlton, some PR firm. This guy didn't even you know, know anything about tech. Um, Hill and Knowlton. I mean, never, you know, I've heard of them before. They're apparently a big firm, but classic PR. This guy was clueless. Um, and then, you know, I then was like, okay, I'm going to then do a social cam and tweet about it. And then one of the Salesforce said, no, no, you got to come in the front. Sales Silicon Angle, you got to get up here. So okay. essentially cut the line. Mercury News, Reuters, Wall Street Journal, all there. Silicon. I'm in the front and uh, we were streaming. You saw the, you know, the gorilla streaming, essentially Logitech's mark. Uh, so Mark knows, are we going to do the Logitechs? Um, you guys did a great Circa job. Circa 2009. You guys did a great job of carrying the live stream. Um, and it was great. I mean, I thought La um, Larry's rejection of Mark Benioff really came down to the fundamental, the fact that Benioff was going to upstage Larry and didn't want to have it. Now, Larry's going to have the last word at 2.30. We'll be covering that live here, Dave. We'll do our commentary on that. I can't wait to see the explosiveness from Larry Ellison. Um, from this keynote, essentially Mark, essentially give him the bird, pull down his pants, shine him a moon, as they say in, in the tech business. So, so we'll see what Larry does. There's no doubt he's going to have the last word. You're absolutely right. Now, he, Benioff apologized to, uh, to Larry at the start of his talk. Did, did, it, did it come across as sincere? Or? Well, he made a joke about his mother being there, and I just, you know, so his apology was we, not we, we sincere. Uh, the apology was not sincere. It's like, oh, my mother's here, and I want to apologize for my mother because she really wanted to see my keynote. Ah, yeah. And so, and I also want to apologize to Larry Ellison. So, you know, underhanded, um, you know, dig there. And, and he made the comment, "Next slide, please." And oh, I have a clicker. And uh, you know, so, 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 so it was, you know, all in good fun. Um, obviously, they worked together. They, you know, Benioff was the apprentice, Larry the master. Um, way back when in Oracle, you know, the history is, as we know it, is sales, we went out and spun out Salesforce. Mark, a technical guy, a great marketer. I'll see the, uh, uh, but, but the core message was social. Social's changing the world, social everything. You saw some of my tweets, I was trying to chime in some comments because the audio was down, but, but it was a great message. Uh, I felt that he might have blown the opportunity with the guerrilla marketing, but he went into too much of sales pitch, the chatter demo, you know, the canned keynote stuff. I think if he toned that down, it would have been an absolute home run, grand slam. Right now, I'd give it a home run by itself, but it would have been a grand slam, Dave, if he just like, cut out some of the sales BS that was you know, the chatter demo. And, you know, I agree, I mean, hype. frankly, when, when he went to the, some of that, uh, heavy demos we can't we cut back and 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 summarized I, we thought that was of more value to our audience um, it was good it was the Burberry you know it's good to get a little flavor for it but it was I felt too heavy-handed too much uh, I would have liked to hear heard more of the vision it's good to have some proof points but I thought it was a bit too much yeah I mean it, he had a lot of the canned keynote stuff integrated in us he didn't have a lot of preparation to make it more gorilla right. but I would have definitely doubled down on the Heroku message and the fact that developers can boot up uh, apps in, in, in days not weeks that was a transformative message he missed the boat on that he kind of talked about it 
Um, the other thing that was getting a lot of Twitter uh, negative was that there was a lot of Salesforce.com employees and cheerleaders doing the normal social media BS, like, oh, we love Salesforce, and kind of polluting the stream. So that was just some feedback from people on Twitter um, that I noticed was uh, that it was getting noisy in the Twitter stream, yeah, mainly, mainly because of uh, too many pro Salesforce employees I trying to push the Kool-Aid a little bit too much when it was already a home run. I, I felt that was a little bit underhanded and quite frankly, you know, just poor social media execution on uh, Salesforce. Yeah, one part. of the comments you made, I mean, I think you're, you're right about the Haruku message. I think that played very well. You made the comment on the, the feed uh, through Skype that, you know, CNBC, you know, kind of really sort of an old media story. False media. Yeah, false if media. If Oracle's false cloud, CNBC is false and, media. And Heroku, obviously, if a company founded in 2007, next-gen application platform, and... Uh, well, I mean, I thought there was a disconnect between CNBC as one of their examples. Absolutely. I mean, he's out there saying, social's changing the world, and all of a sudden, oh, CNBC. CNBC isn't really the poster child of, um, <laughs> of social and any kind of new, anything. The Cube, if anything, here, what we're doing is the future. Uh, certainly not CNBC. The Cube is more future than CNBC. Uh, you heard it here first in 2011 when we, when we bypassed them in a few years, Dave. No, but seriously, uh, one of the employees of Salesforce, Kevin Marks, uh, his Twitter handle is KMarks. Um, he jumped on and jumped all over me like a, you know, like a fly on you know what, and said, oh no, no, that's not the message. And, and he's got a good point, although a little bit too heavy handed to try to jam the Kool-Aid down my throat. But his point was, it wasn't a disconnect. Salesforce is trying to show that they're transforming CNBC to be new media. Okay, I buy that. Um, I, I give him that. I'm not gonna. I, I'm not gonna argue with that. I think yeah, that's and maybe CNBC. You know, like ESPN is. Gonna but I'm not sure that's keynote worthy. Yeah. Personally, I don't think that's would have been keynote worthy. Um, a different message would have been highlight a developer who's knocked it out of the park and and proof points around new examples of disruption, new examples of innovation, uh, like what uh, we see what NetApp did yesterday with Moneyball. I mean, I thought that was really a, a clever example of taking something current and showing an example of big data. I didn't see that, I saw a lot of canned things. Uh, again, the Haruko thing was positive, yep. so. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the big updraft was the fact that the keynote got canceled. I mean, I think that uh, Benioff said it today in the Wall Street Journal, or so the Wall Street Journal article said it, is they should thank them for canceling the keynote because uh, you can't buy publicity like this. Yeah. Uh, that's interesting, you were saying, um, uh, the, the, your guest that you had on, um, what's his name? Michael Krinsman. Michael, Michael Krinsman. Um, saying about the, the email now, that conflicts with the report in the Wall Street Journal today that said essentially, um, and, and, and Benioff sort of confirmed this, that they moved, he said, they moved his speech from 10.15 uh, on Wednesday to 6 o'clock. He said 6 a.m. Thursday, I had read it was 8 a.m., whatever, it doesn't really matter. You know, maybe uh, maybe Oracle doesn't want to give up the million dollars that they paid for the keynote, which has been reported as what they paid, so they move them on to, oh no, next day we're having a scheduling change. Um, all that is all underhanded, reported after the fact. I'm sure what happened was when this story started going viral, after SiliconAngle.com broke it, uh, Clint Finley broke the story and then picked up by all things D and everybody else, because it was on Twitter. Um, when it got out of control, Oracle then issued a statement, oh no, no, we didn't cancel it, we just have to make the change of plan. So they made up an excuse. Because of uh, had, you know, overwhelming attendance, they yeah, said. Yeah, the, the yeah. classic messaging. Yeah, I mean, so it was basically <laughs> FU, Larry basically came down and said, he's out. Essentially, what happened, folks, is Mark Benioff was kicked out of the Oracle party, um, and uh, that's just the way it is. Uh, between and he was kicked out for basically retweeting and posting on Facebook uh, Kristen Nicole's story and saying, uh, Larry set the bar really low. Yeah, I mean, he was aggressive, and, and he's a showman, and that's his, he's, that's his goal. Um, I, think, I think they shouldn't have canceled him, but uh, then again, you don't want to be upstaged. Larry Ellison does not want to be upstaged by Mark Benioff in any way, so clearly they'll either give the million dollars back or even more of a diss to Salesforce is to take the million, screw up their keynote, and then put them out on uh, Thursday morning. John, he said uh, Oracle Open World is all about the next generation mainframe computer. Um, it's not, in his opinion, the next great thing. Uh, he wants to get away from proprietary hardware and software and move into the cloud. He's not here to sell more computers. He's here to create growth and to create jobs. So I thought that was good messaging. Very oh, strong. it's great. You can, you can smoke that peace pipe all day long. It's great messaging. Um, but the reality is, is that there are some serious issues with, with social, social infrastructure that they're promoting, and that is the following. 
social media as we know it is a time waster in most people's eyes, not a productivity gain. They're pushing the productivity gain. It might be a little bit too early. We'll see. I like the message. I think that's a good one. The other one is there's a lot of noise and a lot of trust issues on social media. I just don't see the enterprises rolling in and using social media to the point of making a killer productivity tool. Today, I think there's a lot of things that need to be developed, as I pointed out on Twitter. In my opinion, the algorithms and the relevance side of it really needs to be developed, and that's clearly going to be the case. So that's kind of my opinion. I think Salesforce is really early on this, as they say, wicked early uh, in Massachusetts, and uh, so it's good. I mean, they have the road. Now they're going to retool. The other thing that I thought was compelling in his message was the Facebook positioning. Um, obviously, they're putting the whole like button out there, which I think is a little bit over the top, but it makes the point. It resonates with the 800 million people who use Facebook. But his point is, Facebook's value proposition to their users and their revenue and their impact to society has nothing to do with Oracle, meaning um, Oracle runs General Ledger, and that, that is basically tech code for, they run irrelevant plumbing. You know, okay, they do accounting, that's an important system, um, and it's like you know, plumbing in a, in a building. Yeah, it moves the water back and forth, but you know, it's critical, but no one really thinks about it. You just pay for it, it's a utility, done. It's not really innovative game changer. Well, but, but you know, I remember, it reminds me of your conversation with Dave Hitz, uh, NetApp founder and, and former CTO and now just you know, evangelist, or whatever he does now, he does a lot of things, but he talked about plumbing, storage is plumbing, you know, where, where, you know, and you said cold, clear water, when the plumbing breaks, there's a problem. And the reason I'm bringing that up is, you know, the dirty little secret is that Salesforce uses proprietary software to run its business. Okay, they don't talk about that that much. Um, yeah. And they're a customer of Oracle. We know that. We're in the valley. You, you we're plugged in, right? We, yeah. we know what's going on there. Um, but I guess the point is, so what? The new growth, the new jobs, the new innovation is not around running payroll, you know, running well, finance. Well, I think, I think, I think uh, you know, in the keynote from Benioff, or his un-keynote, un was the fact that he showed that Heroku demo. I thought that of all the canned demos, that was the most powerful. The music was great, as Alex Williams on Twitter said, uh, it's like Vikings going down the street, you know, right, bro, and the music was good. But the message was good, literally. We want to get stuff up in, in, in days, application, application development. And that really is the reality of business. And I think that, you know, as one of the things that I see happening that aligns with that message is the real-time business, we talk about analytics, is going to be on the application side too. I think developers are going to have to be more real-time than ever before in the coming years, and that is going to be what Heroku points to, and that you don't, I don't want to do a lot of specking, I want just apps up and running. So that message was absolutely what they should have focused on more, and they really didn't. John, um, he, Benioff put up a chart showing you know, the progression of all the great leaders, Ken Olson and the mini computer, and Bill Gates and PCs, and yep. Sergey and Larry and Cloud, and then Jobs with mobile, and then he put Zuckerberg up there with Facebook as the next big wave. What'd you think of that? I think it's totally true. I mean, Facebook's undeniably a force, huge growth. Uh, Zuckerberg obviously is, is who he is, and he's a young kid, and he's growing up and managing that company in the way he sees fit, which I love. I love the fact that he's still CEO of the company and has not given up control. You know how I feel about that, Dave. I feel founders should be in control of their companies all the way until they step down. And I think they, you know, they should have the right to drive the ship into the iceberg or not, or if it's growing, stay and be, you know, grow with the company um, until they feel they should step down. So I like how Zuckerberg is still the CEO, but absolutely, you know, the force of social graphs, open graph, the CIO talking is a real force. Obviously, we rely on traffic from social channels and SiliconANGLE, Wikibon, and theCUBE. So we cannot deny the fact that this is the future. I mean, there's no debate. That's the future. People are doing more social than they are actual old school search. Well, I'm sure the trend is to move more towards social than old school search.